We're on our way to the lodge to drop our gear off where we'll be staying for the next couple of days. We're going to hit the range, make sure all our rifles are zeroed, and then this evening we're going to head to the fields for some hogging. We're here with Rod Pinkston of Jaeger Pro. The sun's getting ready to set. We're about to head out and do some hog hunting tonight. Rod, I'd like you to tell, you, tell us a little bit about what we'll be using tonight. Well, tonight we're going to engage moving targets of hogs using the same infrared optics that we're using in combat in Iraq and Afghanistan. We're going to be using night vision and thermal. Thermal is the better of the two because when I started, I started off with a night vision scope. And, and night vision is kind of reading that infrared light that's close to visible light. But you can't see nearly as far as you can when you're seeing uh, using thermal. How far will we be seeing with these? Tonight? This device right here is the exact same thermal that we have on our 50 caliber machine guns in the Army. This is actually rated at 2,200 meters. I mean, we're looking wow. at, at vehicles at that distance. But we'll be able to see hogs and deer at a mile tonight. I'll okay. be able to be able to tell the difference whether they're a hog or a deer, the difference between them at, at a half mile. We've got a target down here to make sure we're going to be zeroed. You've got hot water in that bottle so we can actually see yeah. it in the sky. Because if, if you just look down there on a regular, you know, bullseye on a, on a target, you couldn't differentiate that. You know, because we're reading uh, the heat of the animals, we got to have some heat down there. So we just took a water bottle and have it on end, so that's all we can see is just the, the bottom of it. Okay. And it's, that water's probably 150 degrees, so it should shine up really bright through the scope. All right, well, let's check it out. You guys ready? All right, take off your safeties. Here we go. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, Rob, we're here talking about crop damage. Why don't you explain what we're looking at right here uh, caused from hogs? Well, this farmer planted this field in the first week in April. I remember when he called us, we killed 11 hogs in this field. And when we showed up, we had all kinds of places just like this. He had planted and the hogs will come in right behind the planter, but you have a nose print going right down the row, eating every peanut that's in the ground. The pull, pulling them out, the ones he planted right then, the, huh? Their, their nose is incredible. And this is where this, you notice there's not any plant at all. All the damage from last night, you know, they're going in here and actually rooting this up, and you'll see the plant there and the peanuts are right. exposed. There's nothing here. It's because they got all the peanut seed and that, behind the plant. And you can find example. This is just an example. You can find this all over this field. Yeah, if you here. stand up on my truck, you can see little spots like this all over the place. And this is costing farmer sure. yield. Absolutely. Well, I mean, what kind of what kind of monetary value are we talking about here in Georgia? The damage well, that hogs are doing. That, that's one of the problems with the insurance industry. They don't quantify, you know, actual hog or deer damage. It's all lumped together with crop damage, so it could be hail, drought, wind. It's all lumped you. together. The state of Texas is the only state that I know that keeps good quantifiable records. And, l and last year, I know the numbers were 52.7 million no just from kidding. hog damage. One state. One state. Wow. So it, it's a bigger problem, I think, than most people realize. The farmers realize how much that they're paying in crop damage. Absolutely. But it would take somebody like the insurance, insurance industry to quantify all those numbers but right now, the way it's set up, it's just... Just can't be done. The, the farmers are guaranteed a certain yield by their acreage. And it doesn't matter how that damage was caused. It's just kind of lumped together as crop damage. But it's a big problem, but it's not quantifiable right now. Right. I wish more te more states like Texas quantified it. Sure. And that would make all the difference in the world, I think, for additional funding and, and those type things. That's why the farmers enjoy what we're doing. Everybody ready? 
you're okay. Straight in front of me. You got a couple of them stacked up. All right, you guys ready? All right, take off your safeties. Here we go. On zero. Ready? On zero. Three, two, one. We hunted hard this evening, hunted for how many hours before we finally saw a pig? Well, I knew this field, this farmer had reported that there had been some problems. It's just a matter of are they in this peanut field, that one, that one. And it was really as soon as we pulled up here, yeah. we spotted two boars. Yes, yeah, sure did. And we ended up, we got 600 pounds of pork on the ground with uh, <laughs> just one stalk. Yeah. So, you know, we, we proved that our methods are effective. Right now, uh, you know, we just started our fall hunts because the peanuts are just now starting to mature to where the hogs are causing that's problems. That's what we got in that's the what, background mm -hmm. here. And, and where we uh, shot these, they were doing some considerable damage. And uh, you know, we didn't get a shot on the, the two boars, but where the one boar went led us right to the rest of the group. Right. Now, I think the, the there's two groups in that field. There were these, I think there were six, maybe seven. And yeah, we took one. out five in that, and I saw a second group in the back of the field. But um, they were over a little rise yeah. from us. And, and and I prefer to have smaller groups of five, six, seven. When you got a great big group of fifteen or twenty, sure. there's too many eyes and ears. This was an effective stock. Um, we're just not going to see as many hogs in a night this time of year. In two weeks, three weeks from now, you know, we'll be back up to our double digits. You know, fifteen, eighteen in a night. Well, but, I mean, the stock worked out great. Heck, how close did you get us? We were inside of fifty yards, definitely. <laughs> it was close. I mean, how big is this sow here? She's going to be every bit of 250. And, and she uh, was I, I, huge in the scope. I mean, <laughs> look like a big grizzly bear. I would say she's 250. This boar here is around two. This one's 150 or so. And those combined, you know, are going to be 120 pounds, you know, 60 pounders each. But so, uh, you know, I'm happy with uh, that's a great for one stock. Great night. Heck, what is it, five in the morning right five. now? By the time we get these processed, it'll be time for breakfast. That's right. Well, it's been a great evening, folks, and uh, tomorrow night we're going to give it a go again. We took five out of here. I mean, what kind of relief will on the size hogs we got last night? You know, we killed three over, you know, near 200 or over 200 pounds. What's that going to do here? I'm a firm believer that you have to take out 90% of adults and 80% of the juveniles to be able to make any considerable difference. To even now, decrease the population. Yeah, because hogs are such prolific breeders, there's no other big game species that reproduces as young as hogs do. They reach sexual maturity at eight months old. Wow. They're already bred and they have their first litter. Their gestation period is 114 days. So really three months, three weeks, and three days is a good way to remember wow. that. Wow. So they're having their first letter before their first birthday. No other big game species does that. Sure. No other big game species reproduces twice a year. These hogs will have two litters. That 250 pounder last night, she had eight embryos inside. Right. You know, not only did we kill those five, we took out the eight that were really last night we had a 13 hog night. Sure. I don't count that for my numbers that way. But I mean, really, if we shoot 600 hogs a year with a rifle and you keep track of the embryos that those sows are producing. Those are going to be pigs. <laughs> they <right>. are pigs. <laughs> so that's why traditional hunting will never be effective at hog control because the traditional hunter is looking at, I want that one mature animal. Right. In hogs, the juveniles are the ones that are creating the population explosion. Right. You know, most hunters don't come in looking to want to shoot a 50 pounder. Sure. Well, that 50 pounder is the one that's going to be producing pigs at the end of the year. So that's, that's why we do it that way. We need to take out the juveniles, we need to take out the adults, and we need to take out a bunch of them because they breed so quickly and the traps aren't working this time of year. This is the most effective method in a field when they're causing crop, crop damage. 
Well, we've got just a couple hours before the sun goes down. We're going to get set up and see yeah. if we can. I'd like to go scout that area in the daytime. Sure. And look at whatever elevation we're, we're dealing with and the wind. And let's find a good spot so we can cover that whole entire field from one place. We'll change it up. We won't be moving around very much tonight. We'll just stay in one location. We know the hogs are coming out. We just don't know if it's going to be 9 o'clock or 4 o'clock in the morning. All right. Sounds good. Well, we did just like Rod said. We set up in that field before dark. And we waited for about an hour and a half, and we hadn't seen anything to that point. Just a few hundred yards away through a tree line was another field where hogs had been feeding. So Rod and I picked up the scope, and we headed that way. And as soon as we got to the field, there was a lone boar about 300 yards off in the peanuts feeding already. So we went back, got the other guys, got the guns, and we started the stalk. And it was going good. We, the wind was right, and we got in there. And it just didn't work out. The hog fed out of the field as we got within about 150 yards. And the rest of the night seemed to go that way for us. We had blown stalk after blown stalk. So at Predator Extreme, we know how to bust coyotes. So that's what we did the rest of the evening. I have to take a headshot. That's all I can see. Right. Next time he raises his head, I'm gonna pop him. We had been hunting all night. It's four in the morning. This is two straight nights of hunting. We just got done with our last stalk. We had two hogs in the field. The wind swirled like usual that evening. Deer started blowing. The hogs were gone. We did spot one more hog, and he was 300 yards out making a beeline to the tree line, and this was across the entire peanut field. So we started hoofing it. And Rod's ex-military, so we felt like we were in boot camp trying to keep up. We got to the other side to cut off this hog, and it's funny how your mind plays tricks on you in the night, because this 300-pound hog turned out to be about a 30-pound coyote, and he ended up with the bad end of the deal.